Hi, it's Andy Taylor from Tech Talk Radio, and maybe you saw our segment on KOLD TV 13's Tech Tuesday on how to change the memory out on your laptop. Now, on the particular laptop model we were using on Channel 13, we were actually showing how to change the memory out in one area. Well, actually, in many laptops, they actually have it in two different areas. They'll have it under the keyboard and on the bottom of the laptop, like we showed you on TV, in this area right here. It makes it very easy to change the laptop. Now, we also find other laptops now where they do incorporate this all into one area, so upgrading is rather easy. So I want to show you the steps on how to change the laptop memory out of a 6201 series HP laptop. It's really not all that difficult. There are some precautions you want to take. Number one, the first precaution, don't have any liquid nearby. You don't want to be drinking a soda pop or water or whatever uh, because uh, if you accidentally spill, that's uh, quite, a, quite an investment down the drain. Uh, also, uh, you want to make sure you pull the battery out. So we're going to go ahead and pull the battery out of the unit right here. Just do that very easily just by flipping the switch and taking the battery out. You could pull the hard drive out of the unit as well. Some people have actually recommended that. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm not going to show you how to do that. We're not going to go through that step. But what we do want to do is we're going to remove some screws out of the bottom of the unit. And I'll show you why. We actually, to get to the memory in this computer, we actually have to remove this keyboard. But to remove the keyboard, they're held in by four screws, which are under this top panel right here. So how do we get this top panel out without breaking it? Very easy. Go to the bottom of the panel, the system, and just undo these screws, which are here. Uh, generally four or five screws, depending on the model. And you know, one other thing you can do is you can also go to the manufacturer's website and many times you'll find a service manual that you can download in PDF form. I'd actually recommend that. Even if you're never planning on doing any work on your laptop, this way you always have it on hand. And if you ever have to replace something, uh, if you ever want to upgrade, you have the ability to do it just by looking at that manual and maybe even ordering parts. Now this laptop was dropped by a bellman at the Fitzgerald Hotel in Las Vegas and it broke the front panel. For years I've been thinking, what am I going to do because we showed this thing on TV and it looks pretty nasty. Well, we found the part number on the HP website and now we can do a search and try and see if we can replace that. Now with all of those screws undone, sometimes they're a little difficult to come out. So I don't recommend working on any shag carpeted area. Also there's some other reasons for that too. Let's we'll see if we can get the screws out and there they are and they just fall out. So we'll go ahead and we will put these away in an area where you're not going to lose them either. And uh, don't want to work on a dark surface because then you'll never find them again. So we open up the laptop. Now instead of opening it up like you normally would like if you're going to work on it, you want to go ahead and swing this all the way down. This will allow this area to pop up. You want to start from the right side, all right, and just give a little pull. And be very gentle with it. Don't just rip it up and then lift that piece out. Now, there's nothing holding that piece to the board so you're okay there and put that aside. You want to protect this area. You want to be very careful about this because this is the connector that goes to your LCD screen. You lose your LCD screen, laptop, well, yeah, you could connect it to an external monitor, but nobody really wants to do that. Next thing you want to do, let's go ahead and take these screws out of the keyboard. Now, some people have found by looking online at the HP manual, uh, you can actually uh, purchase a replacement keyboard. They're really not that expensive, and a reason you'd want to do that is because you use your laptop all the time, you're a little rough on the keys, and maybe you've rubbed off some letters, or it just doesn't look nice. Well, here's how easy it is to do. But before you take the keyboard off, you want to remember, lift it gently, because it's not like that first piece that we pulled off, it is attached, and it's attached via a ribbon cable. You break this ribbon cable, uh, you are going to have to get a new keyboard. And this cable is attached to the motherboard, which is right under this unit right here. So we'll go ahead and we'll kind of put that aside. We're not disconnecting it completely, because now, where's the memory? Well, they're smart. They put the memory under this protective piece right here. And getting to it, fairly easy. Put this piece aside, you're going to want to use it, reuse that. Just take your fingers, just like you did on the other one, and flip it open. It'll pop out at a 45 degree angle. So, we went to Crucial, we went ahead and got the memory kit, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead, put the other memory in one of these resealable bags so you can store it and protect it, then get your new memory, take it, slide it into the computer. Basically, you saw this, there's a key there, you want to put it in the right, where you see that notch is, and then push down. It'll snap into place. 
So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and put the computer back together. And once we have this computer back together, we'll fire it up and make sure the memory is being read. Now, we've gone from a 512 megabyte machine to two gigabytes, which is really not that expensive and Crucial makes it easy. You can also log on to Crucial's website, as we said in the TV segment, and you can actually have it scan your system. It'll tell you what kind of memory it is you have and what kind of paths you have to upgrade. So let's get this puppy back together, fire it up and see if it registers all the memory. But don't forget to put this back in its place. Okay, we snapped the battery back in. Let's go ahead, turn it over, open it up, and hit the power button. Now here's how we're gonna tell that we have the proper amount of memory. When your system's booting up, and you may have a little problem seeing this on the camera, we're gonna go ahead and go into our mode here. We're just gonna test the memory. There you go, 2046M. That's basically two gigabytes of memory, and we're good to go. Our system will now go ahead and boot. We're gonna boot it normally. There you go, you've just upgraded your system to two gigabytes of memory with the other memory upgrade you did on the bottom of the machine. Now remember, it, depending on each system, you're gonna have to check with your manufacturer or even check with crucial.com where you can find out just how much memory your laptop can take. And even if it can take a lot of memory, you'll find some laptops coming up now that will take a lot, but run in Windows XP 64 or Vista 64. With uh, Windows XP standard basic 32-bit version, you can only use three gigabytes of uh, RAM information anyway, so that's all, it'll, that's all it'll access. So you don't want to go overboard with it. But in the meantime, you've pepped up your system. I'd recommend doing a defragmentation. And if you want more information, check out the manufacturer of your laptop's website or crucial.com. I'm Andy Taylor for Tech Talk Radio. Thanks for checking it out.